All right, we can go ahead and get started. Um, this is Kalan Thadani, and I know on the sidebar it says I am logged in as Amanda McDonald, but like the other webinars that you all have been on, she um, holds the webinar account in her name, so that's why it says that it's Amanda McDonald speaking. But good evening, I hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm really excited for this evening as we get to learn a little bit more about the epidemic of childhood obesity, which I know ties in very closely with many of your projects. And so we have the Alliance for a Healthier Generation with us, and we have two people. We have um, Lizette Sanchez, as well as um, one of their uh, youth ambassador, I guess youth ambassador equivalents, a uh, member of their youth advisory board, who will be sharing with us and facilitating a discussion with us this evening. And so, um, Lizeth, if you would like to start with an introduction. Okay, I think I'm not on mute anymore, thanks. Um, well, welcome everyone. I, um, as Karen mentioned, my name is Lizeth, and I work for the Alliance. I um, have the great privilege of actually working and supporting our Youth Advisory Board members. Um, and I'm actually going to pass it over to Ashlyn. Um, were we able to see, can we have um, people on the call um, participate in the warm-up? Um, yes, absolutely. And so I was just going to explain that for a brief second. I know usually we have everyone muted um, for the webinars, but for these first couple minutes, I'm going to unmute the lines. And so if you have any music or anything playing in the background, please turn that off um, just so um, we can get to know a little bit about each other and who all is on the webinar. And so um, I will slowly be unmuting everyone. Thank you. I'm actually going to pass it over to Ashley, um, who's going to do a quick warm-up game. Excellent. Okay. Um, you guys can hear me, right? Yep. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, we're going to have a little quiz that's going to basically just like introduce more of the topics that we're going to talk about today. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm about to hear a bit of it in the background. But, so, we're just going to go around the questions and we can answer. So, the experts project that blank children born in 2000 will develop type 2 diabetes. Who wants the answer can go for it. Can't hear me. I'll type the question into in case you guys can't hear me. Perfect. That would be great. Okay, and I'll, I'll reread that question. It's, her question was, experts project that blank children in what year is that? 2000, sorry. <laughs> um, in 2000, well, is there 2000 specific? Just 2000. Oh, in 2000, we'll develop type 2 diabetes. Is that in the year 2000? Yes. Okay. Wait, so children born in the, U, in the year 2000, what percentage of them will develop diabetes? 
Correct. Mm. Um, Pistol choices, there you guys. Oh, okay. Ali, I think that was you. She um, asked, she, her answer was 11%, but the choices are 1 in 3, 2 in 3, or one in th 4 in 5. I would say 4 in 5. 4 in 5, okay. So we have a 1 in 3, 4 in 5. Any other thoughts? One and three. And is that it? I think so. Uh huh. One and three is correct. One and three is correct. Good job. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next one. Yes. In two thousand eight, more than one point six million children were unable to get needed medical care because the family could not afford it. True or false? What was the percentage? It was more than 1.6 million children. Um, true. Does everyone agree? Yeah, I say true. true. Oh, you guys are good at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is correct. Next question, shall we? What percent of elementary schools do not have physical ed education classes year-round? Are there options? Yes. Um, 90, 85, 83, 64, or 92? 64. 64. No, 64. actually it's 92%. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So let's see. We'll just do one more question because I don't want to take up all the time, you guys. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And the rise in childhood obesity is linked to a dramatic rise in the number of children suffering from... Are there options? <laughs> nope, this is a fill in a blank. This oh. is easy, you guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> Diabetes. Both. Which type? Two. Great. <laughs> that is correct. Perfect. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Ashlyn, for opening opening us up with that. We really appreciate it. And as much as we love to hear everyone's beautiful voice, I will put um, you all back on mute. But Ashlyn and Lizette, the floor is still yours. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so thank you, Ashlyn, for sharing that warm-up. I think um, I think Ashlyn um, wanted to share with all of you some of the statistics about the childhood obesity epidemic in our country. Um, and she's going to talk a little bit more about the epidemic. I just wanted to quickly um, go over what we'll be talking about today. Um, we'll go into a little bit more, as I mentioned, um, about the epidemic in America. Um, Ashton will share a little bit more interesting facts about that. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the Alliance for a Healthier Generation, who we are and what we do. Um, and then Ashton will come back and talk a little bit about the Youth Advisory Board and some of the work that we're doing as a, as a board, but really empowering youth to have a voice on this issue. Um, and then there's a variety of different resources that are out there, so I'll talk a little bit more about what those resources are through our Youth Engagement Guide, and then we'll open it up for um, a few questions and discussion. So I am um, going to pass the phone mic to, or webinar mic, to Ashlyn to talk a little bit more about the epidemic. Hey, thanks, Lizette. Okay, so a few questions that I asked during the little game we had really pertains to this. Like I said, about one in three children and youth, like ages 2 to 19, in the United States are considered overweight or obese. 
that's a really big number. And the like, amount of type 2 diabetes, children suffering from that, definitely been on the rise. And about, like, like I said, one in three children born in 2000 will develop type 2 diabetes as they get older. There's a huge like, increased increase ah, risk of heart failure. Um, from being overweight and out of shape, the heart has to work faster, and that is heart failure, or makes it more likely that children and youth are going to develop heart problems later on in life. Now, poor nutrition is a huge part in that. Only about 20% of like high school seniors report eating fruit and green vegetables five or more times a day. And there's like a lot less physical activity throughout the nation. Like elementary schools, many of them don't actually have physical education classes year round. Most of this is because like a lot of schools report they have a lack of space to play in or like some others just replace recess with more time in the classroom. So that's something else that really affects students. And for like high school students, not even only about a third of them take daily PE classes. Most high schools you only have to take PE for about like two years and then that's it. Um, economic situations, a lot of people like can't afford health care. And so like say like 1.6 million children aren't able to get like, needed medical care because their family can't afford it. And like, another 3 million children, like, their health care was delayed because of worry about the cost. Um, see, diabetes risk is a lot higher among like, minorities, like African Americans, like Hispanics, and Native Americans. They develop type 2 diabetes at a much higher rate than Caucasian peers. Almost half of them are at risk for developing diabetes. And the national cost of obesity is skyrocketed. Um, obesity in the U.S. costs as much as $147 billion per year in direct costs and like, loss of productivity. And like, the Department of Defense data shows that like, 27% of all young Americans 17 to 24 years of age are unable to join the military because they're too overweight to pass physical requirements necessary to fight. A few facts about um, obesity epidemic, and I'll pass the phone mic over to Lizette. Thank you. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the Alliance um, for a Healthier Generation. We were founded in um, 2005 by the American Heart Association and the Clinton Foundation. Um, back a little, I think it was actually in 2004, President Clinton um, had a stroke, and the American Heart Association approached the Cl President Clinton um, asking if they could collaborate or work with him on heart health issues. And so it was President Clinton that um, brought up the, uh, the idea of focusing on childhood obesity. He was um, overweight as a kid and suffered a lot um, growing up with his weight issues um, and not really being the healthiest that he could be at a young age. And so he wanted to focus, especially with the epide epidemic growing um, and on a rise, he really wanted to focus on childhood obesity issues and really help engage and educate young people about the importance of healthy living. So the Foundation, the Clinton Foundation and Heart Association joined forces to really tackle this issue um, on a variety of different levels. Um, but here on our PowerPoint, it says that we want to reduce the nationwide prevalence of childhood obesity by 2015. That statement is actually wrong. <laughs> we need to change that. Um, it's really, you know, a lifelong goal of ours to really you know, continue to help educate and engage and inspire young people to de develop a lifelong healthy habit. Um, so that 2015 mark is not is no longer in our vocabulary anymore. Um, it's something that we've just recently changed. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about our reach and what we've been able to do um, throughout the last um, few years. 
of working on this issue. So we've worked in schools. Um, we're in school, we're in 15,000 schools in 50 states creating healthier environments. So basically what that means is we're working with schools across the country to help create healthier environments in the school setting because we know that students or kids spend a majority of their time throughout the day at school. So we want to make sure that their school environment is really a healthy one. So we're working with schools across the country um, that are, have limited access to really educate them and help them create that, those healthy environments. Um, we've reached over 2.5 million teens and tweens across the country. Um, committing to healthy changes. So part of that is, you know, we have this amazing group of young people on our board who are making changes in their community, but we're also engaging students in schools and after school settings. So we're trying to help um, spread awareness to youth across the country. And through certain um, initiatives and programs that we've developed, we've reached over 2.5 million. Um, we are also working with doctors. We've reached over 56,000 doctor's offices across the country providing prevention services. So we're working with doctors and insurers across the country to help um, provide resources for prevention services. So right now, um, most, most doctors or most doctor's offices um, or insurances um, don't have um, regular checkups for kids on prevention. Um, and so we're working with those insurers and um, doctor's offices to provide those, um, provide that assistance for families um, so that it's a part of their insurance plan and it's not something that they have to pay out of pocket. Um, we're also um, working with 200 plus Fortune 100 companies and NGOs changing business practices to improve health. So we know that it's important to have a healthy environment in schools. Um, we also realize that you know the family setting, you know, parents, especially um, in the workforce, need equally those same opportunities for healthy living, right? So we're working with companies to provide healthier um, and practices in the business for. Um, we are also um, working with companies um, to help provide healthier options across the country. So working with companies across the country to provide healthier snack options so that it's not just all sugary drinks, but there's actually you know, healthy options of either use drinking water or providing 100% juice. Um, we've actually worked with companies who provide um, food and beverages for vending machines to, per, to create healthier options. So if you go into a school, the hope is that those vending machines um, won't have just a bunch of sugary snacks, but they'll actually have healthier options where it's, you know, granola bars um, that don't have a lot of sugar in them, 100% juice or um, skim milk, um, healthier options for kids to choose from versus the, the sugary um, that you typically see in the vending machine. Um, so those are a few highlights about our reach. Our main focus, um, if you go to the next slide, our main focus is working with schools, um, which I shared, um, and then engaging, organiz engaging organizations after school setting. So like the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, um, organizations that have after school programming. So we've tackled the school setting and now we're trying to reach the after school setting. Um, and then we're also brokering volunteer agreements with food and beverage snack and dairy industries, which I mentioned um, about the vending machine. Um, so those are our three areas of focus. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Ashlyn to talk a little bit about the Youth Advisory Board and why we actually have a Youth Advisory Board um, because this issue directly affects youth 
um, we realized and saw the need to have youth voice a part of the discussion. So Ashton's going to talk a little bit about the board and um, the role with the organization. Okay, thanks for that. So as the youth advisory board member, you see our role, mainly I feel like our role is to just be that youth leader within our community. Because, I mean, all the work that people like Lizette and like that's why they are doing all this type of work is something, it's stuff to benefit youth. It's to benefit the new generation that's coming in. And, I mean, kind of waiting to have some of that generation actually helping and being there to be the ones to be the faces of the change, be the ones who are there to help out to start new movements. So as youth advisory board members, like this group of young people, they go out and just so many amazing things within their communities. We go out and advocate for health and show that youth do have a voice and they also are concerned about matters that affect them and matter you know, it's more important matters and they're just not uh, you know, like just living it up, just living there for the day that we actually have we actually see that different things are going on around us and that's it. They wanna make a change. I think it's just so amazing seeing that some some of the things that the different board members do within their own communities. Some start up gardens with their own like non profits and it's just really great to see that a youth what youth can actually do when they put their mind to it and when they have especially like a strong backbone behind them, like the alliance, all the staff of the alliance do great help. They just they they just do so such a wonderful job. And the youth advisory board I feel like we are an, we're an, more or less an example of all the great work they do because we go out and with their training, with their help, we go out and we go out, we make a difference in our community, and I think that's a wonderful job. Um, as advisory board members, you know, um, at around like 18, you leave the board if you make 18 while on there that's your last year on the board. But I know like so many of our alumni do such wonderful things in college, just beyond that, they just do such a great job within like just using training that they learned from the staff at the Alliance and doing all the stuff they've done in previous years. They learn how to apply that as they grow older and it just stays with them and they become like advocates for health and advocates for a healthy generation and healthier lifestyle as they get older and they continue to do that. So a wonderful job and that kind of sums up what the Youth Advisory Board does as members they really advocate and they're there to make sure that change does happen. So I'll pass this back to Lizette. Thank you, Ashlyn. Um, I should mention that um, so this slide of the map is actually where we currently have Youth Advisory Board members. Um, and our, I, I know that the, um, I know why it has a group of, of ambassadors. Um, our age range for youth that participate on our board is a little younger, from eight years old to 17. Um, and you may say eight might be a little bit young, but actually some of our most ambitious board members are our younger board members. Um, who have done quite a bit in their community and have seen a lot of impact um, in their community. So this is just a, a snapshot of where they're located across the country. Can you go to the next slide? Um, I also forgot to mention that Ashlyn is um, a senior um, at, in, at Thomas Jefferson High School in Granite, Louisiana, um, and this is actually her last year on our board, so she'll be graduating. Um, we will miss her, but she'll be a part of our, our alumni group, which, um, as Ashlyn mentioned, you know, we do have several of our alumni still engaged with the Alliance and working in their own community um, at the college level of, you know, educating their, their peers about healthy living, because it doesn't stop after high school. You know, the hope is that you know you'll continue to take these things that you've learned about healthy living and implement them throughout your life, um, so that translates to college life. 
Um, some of, I'll actually say that some of our alumni, and you guys might um, relate to this or not, but you know, some of our alumni, alumni have shared that you know, um, it can be even more challenging to live healthier in the college setting if you live in the dorms um, because there's not always those healthier options or you know, people don't always practice the, the healthier um, options of, of eating and keeping active. Um, so that might um, resonate with, with all of you, um, those of you who are in college. Um, we can go over to the next slide. So as I mentioned, there's a variety of different resources that are available to you. I know that we have a few resources that I'm going to share. Um, one of them is the Youth Engagement Guide. Um, and the Youth Engagement Guide is really a guide to help um, adults as well as youth um, who want to create change um, in their community on healthy living. Um, so the guide is focused on in, or organized into three sections. Um, the first section is health-focused youth programming. So it's um, you know inspiration coupled with practical ideas for health-focused programs um, on peer education, service learning, activism, and civic engagement. Some of these um, practices and principles we've also um, utilized YSA's expertise in service learning and civic engagement um, to implement some of those own those concepts into the health focused programs that we have available. Um, the second section is youth participation on adult led wellness councils. So practical steps for meaningful um, meaningfully including young people in school or community based wellness councils. So if you are interested in starting a wellness council um, in your community or at your school, this kind of gives you some practical steps and tips on how to do that as well as the lead to some conversations. There's also the third section is youth-led health advisory groups. So step-by-step -step plans for creating a youth-led health advisory group for schools or community-based organizations. So we have this National Youth Advisory Board, and we've um, used some of those principles and practices that we've implemented on our national board to be applied for anyone that's interested in creating a local board um, based on our best practices. Um, so there's a lot of um, a lot of content in the book. You can download a copy of the engagement guide um, by going to our website, um, healthiergeneration.org and click the tab that says out of school time or out of school studying. Um, once you click to that tab, it'll have a list of resources and you can click on the youth engagement guide. Um, we also have a, a, a few other resources that are mentioned in the guide and also on the website to download. Um, aside, from, aside from the youth engagement guide, there are a, a bunch of other resources that you can tap into, like the I, IOM, um, which is the Institute of Medicine, and that really gives a lot of good content and rich content on um, creating healthier environments. Um, that's actually some of the principles that they talk about in the IOM recommendations are principles that we've actually covered with our youth advisory board. Um, just recently at our winter meeting. So it has a lot of good content um, and recommendations on what you can do in your community to create a healthier environment. So I suggest that, um, as well as um, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has a great amount of resources on healthier environments or healthy communities. Um, you could also tap into, and I can um, email this um, to Karana and forward it to all of you as well. Um, but it, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has a wealth of resources on um, engaging people to become healthier. Um, the other um, resource that, that I'll mention is called Weight of the Nation. I don't know if you saw the documentaries on HBO um, called Weight of the Nation. They were actually put together by the Susan Michael and Susan Bell Foundation. 
And if you go to their website, they have a bunch of um, facts and statistics and research that has been done on childhood obesity and obesity in general. Um, but there's, in one of the doc, there's, I think it's a series of four documentaries. In one of the documentaries, I want to say it's the third one, it focuses specifically on childhood obesity. And it talks through a list of you know, facts and resources that they've utilized um, to, to talk about this issue um, in an educated manner. So it's, it's a good um, website to also go to. Um, so those are a couple of things that, you know, resources that I hope will help you in your efforts. Um, I'm going to open it up to a few questions um, or discussion. Um, if there's any questions specifically about what Ashlyn and I covered, or if there's other general questions about the, the epidemic itself. Awesome. Thank you both so much. Um, and as we've done in previous webinars, if you all have any questions, please feel free to type those through, and I'll read them aloud, and um, either Lizette or Ashlyn can answer those. I actually have a question for the audience. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned that um, several of the, the ambassadors are working on projects related to childhood obesity. Um, are there any challenges that um, any of you have faced um, in regards to, you know, um, working on your project on the ground in your community? Great question. We received one <clears throat> response, and um, I guess our question and question is, how can you better engage families of youth um, in messaging around childhood obesity? It's one thing to do inside the schools, but how does that go back to the family? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think if you're working with youth directly, I think giving them, you know, at first starts with educating them, right, about, you know, ways that they can stay healthy, um, and then, you know, encouraging them um, to share with their family um, on tips of what they can do in the household um, to, to practice what they've learned. Um, I'll share a resource. It's called um, the Be Well Books. Um, there, it's a, a small, it's a, Gosh, I don't even know how many pages it is. It's a short book um, that is um, directly, the audience is directly towards family, um, so parents um, and youth as well, but more so um, with parents. Um, and that kind of talks about, it, it has different, a combination of stories of, of family members across the country that are taking steps to, to live healthy. Um, and then some practical tips that family members can do in their own household. So you're mm -hmm. not just reading about a story of some of a family that's doing a great healthy living, but you're also um, hearing about some practical tips that you can, um, can practice in your own household. Ashlyn is actually featured in, as one of the stories um, in the booklet. Um, so, and you can get, it's free, you can download a copy online or you can order um, several books if you want to, to give, give them out to parents um, or youth um, who have family members that they can share it with. Um, and that's a, that's a good resource to have. Um, but I think, you know, encouraging the youth that you are working with, you know, if there are practical tips that you're providing them, um, to, to stay healthy. Those are some things that they can encourage their parents to, to practice as well. We've had youth that, you know, 
I'll share one example. One youth, um, you know, really wanted to lose weight and realized that their family um, wasn't doing the very you know, best they could to live a healthy lifestyle. Um, and so he took it upon himself to, to start making changes, and he helped um, his family members to, to make those changes along with him. So um, he was able to lose 30 pounds um, and, and participate in a kid's triathlon. And his mom was able to also lose, I think, about 20 pounds through that process. And their whole family started to, to um, buy healthier food um, instead of, you know, uh, junk food or cooking fried chicken all the time. Um, so that's just one example. But, you know, it's not always easy. Um, I would say, you know, it, you can, you know, give them practical tips um, that they can take care of them at home. Um, that's the first step. Thanks. That was great. Um, another, in response to your earlier question, um, one of the investors said sometimes choosing uh, which information to open awareness with could, can be a challenge, whether, um, I guess, what, whether it should be nutrition or exercise and how to open and start that dialogue is sometimes a challenge. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hear you. Um, I would, you know, I think one of the things that we've learned um, with our, our Youth Advisory Board members is figuring out, um, like, you know, obviously figuring out what the need is in your community um, and who your target audience is. Um, find out what would resonate with them the most. Um, to grab their attention. And you can do that by, you know, taking a survey um, or, you know, investigating. Um, but usually if you find out, like, what, what might spark the interest of the community, um, that might help um, make that decision a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, yeah, um, I'm sorry. I want to answer really quick. But like Lizette said, like, definitely, personally, I'm, when I want to figure that out, I usually just, like, go around whatever area I'm targeting or, like, whatever audience I'm targeting. I tend to, like, watch and see, just, like, and go around that area just to make sure, like, see, oh, well, do they have this? Or, like, do they have a lot of nutritional stores or stores that sell, like, fresh fruit and all of that? Do they have a lot of, like, sports or different activities for young people to do? And, but mainly, like, I feel like it's whichever one makes you more comfortable because I feel like they go hand in hand. The nutrition and physical activity, so you don't have to start with a specific one. And they're like, as long as you can start, whichever one you can start with, that like, especially like if your target audience is youth, whichever one you can start with, that like gets them more engaged and gets them like where you can like plug in a game or like make it more interesting. Whichever one you can do that with, I mean, you can focus more on that one. But clearly, they go hand in hand, so it's not, you know, you don't have to start with a specific one. Just go, it makes you feel more comfortable, and like, like, so that's it. Investigate the area, like, the audience you're targeting, just see which, like, nutrition or physical activity, activity, which one would be, like, better to, like, who would fit well with them, you know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you both for that. Yeah, any time. Um, uh Like I said, I am happy to um, email you those resources with links um, along with the, the guide. Um, and then if there's any questions, feel free to, to um, let me know. Happy to help out. Yeah, absolutely. No, I will definitely follow up on that email um, to get that guide and then also share a little bit of information around Weight of the Nation because that is a very interesting document documentary. Um, one other question that came in was how can communities advocate for healthier grocery stores or places that sell more fruits and vegetables? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, we're still trying to figure that out too. Um, I think finding like if you're working with a specific community 
finding out um, who, from a, like, what's the word here? Um, who's your legislator? Like, who's, like, or who's their representative or um, uh, uh, someone in, in public office? Um, that you can reach out to um, and connect with um, that oversees that community or has a say about that community. Um, and finding out how you can reach out to them about that issue. Um, there's a, another resource that I'll mention. It's called the Healthy Corner Store Initiative. And it's actually, um, we actually just um, learned about it in San Antonio, Texas, they're doing what they're doing is providing um, or providing um, nutritious food um, for underserved communities in San Antonio, um, and so I think they're doing something pretty spectacular in that city. Um, so I can send that resource to you. You can probably learn a little bit more about that um, and see if that's something that. Can be implemented in your community. I know it's um, taking place in San Antonio, but there are other cities that are trying to copy that um, that same initiative, um, and I think they might have some resources that might be available um, to help you with that. In addition, excellent. Thanks. Any other last-minute questions? All right. Well, thank you all so much. We really appreciate both of you being on this webinar and sharing all this information with us. And thank you to all the youth ambassadors um, who are also part of this call. This will be posted and shared on the Youth Action Center, so you all can definitely refer back to it. And as soon as Lizette sends over those resources to me, I will forward them on to you. Great. Thank you. And thank you um, for all that you do in your communities. Um, it's people like you that, you know, are helping communities have a voice on this issue. So thank you for all your work. Great job, you guys. Thank you so much for having us. Of course. Have a good night. You, you too. too. Bye. Bye. Bye.